This screencast is on demand. We're going to define demand and understand why the demand curve looks like it does. We will also define the law of demand and understand what causes a change in quantity demanded. Demand. Demand is the willingness and ability to consume or buy at a given price. I mean, we don't consume or eat everything, right? But that just means buy. Um, in order to have demand, you have to have a willingness and ability. If I have a willingness and I want to be able to buy a really expensive pair of shoes, but I don't have the ability to be able to do that, well, then I don't demand it. When we talk about the graphing of demand, you have a vertical axis and you also have a horizontal axis. The vertical axis will always be labeled with price and the horizontal axis will be labeled with quantity. The market that we have here is our title and this is the market for shoes. A graph is not a graph unless it's properly labeled. You need to have a title. And in this case here, we have the market for shoes. Because we've labeled it the market for shoes, we actually don't have to label over here price of shoes. Instead, we can just label it price. And the same here with the quantity of shoes. We can label that just a Q for quantity because we know that it is the price of shoes and the quantity of shoes because of our title. Um, if we're lacking in a title, then the P and the Q don't really stand for anything. So a title is really important. When we're drawing the demand curve, the demand curve is always downward sloping. And what we're again looking at is the willingness and ability to consume at a given price. So at a given price of P1, in order to figure out how much consumers will buy, you draw a line over till it hits the demand curve, and then drawing it down to the horizontal axis will give you the quantity. Now, if we plot a few more of those along the curve here, a few more points, then we could see here at a price of P2, the quantity demanded is at Q2. And if we drop the price down now to P3, we can see that the quantity demanded at a price of P3 is Q3. And the same is true for at P4, the quantity demanded is at Q4. So what we see here is this relationship of as price is going down, the quantity is going up. The demand curve, as we said, is downward sloping. There's three reasons why the demand curve looks like it does. The first one is the income effect. Uh, when I think of income effect, I think of purchasing power. And what this means is that as the price is higher, it's taking up a portion of my income, a higher portion of my income. And so therefore, the quantity that I'm going to demand is less. But as you lower the price, it's taking up less of my purchasing power. And so therefore, the quantity demanded will increase. Another reason why the demand curve is downward sloping is a substitution effect. If the price is high, and we've got here this market for shoes, and the price is high, then the quantity demanded is going to be low because I can find a substitute. Maybe it's flip-flops, or maybe it's some kind of sandals that I can substitute at a lower price. However, if the market for shoes is low, well, then I'm not going to really find another substitute out there that I'm going to choose, and so therefore the quantity demanded will go up. And the third reason, which is probably the most important reason for testing purposes, is diminishing marginal utility. Diminishing goes down. Marginal with each additional unit. Utility is satisfaction or value. And so with each additional unit that a person consumes, the value or the satisfaction becomes less and less. You're not willing to pay as much for more of the same product. The value of it goes down. Those are the three reasons why the demand curve looks like it does. I would especially make sure I understand and can connect the diminishing marginal utility. Um, the next thing then is to get into the law of demand. The law of demand is this inverse or um, negative relationship between price and quantity demanded. As price is going down, quantity demanded is going up. That indicates the law of demand. Well, the converse is true also. As the price is going up from P4, um, excuse me, from uh, P2 to P1, the quantity demanded is going down. 
as the price is going from P4 to P3, the quantity demanded is going up. So again, you have this negative or inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded. Um, when we talk about quantity demanded, we talk about how much of a product people are demanding. And so in this case here, at a given price, how many shoes are people demanding or willing to buy? Because the price is constant and then this is what we're looking at here is uh, the quantity demanded or the willingness and ability. Which leads us to the final thing um, here and that is that a change, which is this delta sign, a change in quantity demanded, which is this, this movement that we've done along the demand curve as we've changed the price, it does not equal a change in demand. And we'll get into a change in demand later in another screencast about the determinants that will actually shift or create a whole new willingness and ability um, to consume at these prices because of certain determinants. What is key is that a change in quantity demanded is dependent upon the change in price. The second that you change the price, you're going to change the quantity demanded. The last thing here is that another way to represent a consumer's willingness and ability to consume at a given price is to use a demand schedule. The demand schedule is the table form of the demand curve. Something to point out that's, that's really important when you're doing uh, graphs is that you have to have equal increments along your axes. And so in this case here, I've given equal increments here of tens, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And while in this case here, when you have a price of 25, the quantity demanded is 33, those don't fit perfectly into the 10 um, increments. And so that's where I'm placing it then along here. Um, you don't have to do 10 for 10, you know, I could have had this one being, um, for the 40s, I could have done 20, 40, you know, or I could have done 5, 10, 15, 20. But whatever you do along the horizontal axis, the numbers have to be in equal increments. You can't just plot um, 10, 20, 33, and 40. They, they have to be all relative to one another.